Jerry at Fair Oaks. Well, Jerry, you're all set. Cadet Dugan of FMA. You know, Lee, that sounds funny. Funny? I mean, me being a cadet. Cadet Dugan. Cadet Dugan. <laughs> You'll have to get used to it. Hey, how does my uniform look? Oh, it sure fits you good, Jerry. Ah, uh, makes me feel kind of important. Well, you ought to be used to wearing a uniform after being with a circus. Oh, uh, that uniform I wore in the circus was only a costume. I had to take it off as soon as I finished my act. But this uniform, well, it, it's different, that's all. Hey, uh, how's my cab? Have I got on right? Mm, let's see. I put it just a little bit to the side. Like this? Uh-huh. Now, down in front more. All right. Now, that's right. Hey, did you notice how careful the quartermaster was when he measured me for my dress uniform? <laughs> I'll say he was careful. Those dress uniforms have to be just right. Why, when you get that uniform, it'll fit you just like a glove. Well, when will I get it? Mm, in about a couple of weeks. Takes time, you know, when they're made to order that way. In the meantime, you'll have to use this fatigue uniform for all occasions. Hey, Lee, hmm? what did the quartermaster mean when he said he didn't think my old clothes would fit me next time I saw him? Well, he checked them and stored them away for you, didn't he? Yeah. Well, those civilian clothes of yours will stay stored away until you leave Fair Oaks. Even at vacation time? Sure. You wear your uniform all the time until you graduate or leave. <laughs> the reason he was kidding you about not being able to get in them again is because he figures they'll be too small for you. Why? I'm not going to grow so fast. No, but you'll gain weight. You watch. Regular hours and regular meals and drilling and setting up exercises every morning and all that, why, well, it'll soon build you up. Well, I gained five pounds the first two weeks I was here. I guess it'll be a whole lot different than the circus. <laughs> you bet it will. You'll like it, too. Oh, look, Jerry, this is Trent Hall. This is the upperclassmen's dormitory, juniors and seniors. Oh. Uh, don't ever go into this building for any reason unless you're invited. I've never been invited, and I've been here at Fair Oaks almost a year. I don't even know what the inside of Trent Hall looks like. But I suppose it's just like our dorm. We're in Hayward Hall, aren't we? Mm-hmm, that's right. That's it, right straight across the quad there. The, the quad? Yeah, we're on the quad now. Oh. Uh, quad means quadrangle. You see, Jerry, you can enter any of the buildings from the quad. Well, I'd call it a sort of big courtyard with all these buildings all around. Hey, uh, tell me about Hayward Hall. Mm, well, it was named in honor of General Hayward, an old army man. But there's more to it than that. I'll tell you all about it sometime. Hey, do you want to go over and see the gym? Sure, I'd like to. Okay, then let's go this way. Say, Lee, hmm? what are all these benches for? There's one under every tree, and let's see, there's... Well, there's six around the fountain. Oh, yeah, I meant to tell you about those benches. You notice they're made out of cement? Uh-huh. Well, each one of those benches has been presented to Fair Oaks by a graduating class. Oh, and all those names carved on the benches are the names of the cadets that graduated that year. Mm, that's right. Come on over here by the fountain, and I'll show you the very first bench. Gee, that's interesting. There's some great names are on those benches, Jerry. Former students that have gone out into the world and done things. I just now noticed that they're all a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Each class has their own design. Now, look. Here's the very first bench. And there are the names of the first graduating class. Hmm, there wasn't many that year, was there? No, that... Oh, look, Jerry. There's Tubby Young. Come on, I want you to meet him. Who's he? <laughs> You'll like him. He's a lot of fun. He's always kidding, never worries about a thing. Uh, Tubby is sure a good name for him. <laughs> he sure is fat. Oh, wait. Look, Jerry. Here comes Captain Gardner. Where? Well, he just came out of Hayward Hall over there. Oh, oh yeah. Now, watch this. He spotted Tubby. He's calling him over. Well, what did Tubby do? I don't know, Jerry, but he did something. <laughs> Captain Gardner wouldn't dress him down. Captain Gardner's awfully nice. and Easy to get along with, too. He'll be your history teacher, Jerry. Say, he is giving Tubby a talking to. <laughs> Most likely giving him some more demerits. 
But it's a sure thing he doesn't need any more. He's got enough already. Demerits? Mm. What are those, Lee? Oh, say, that's right. I haven't told you about that yet. And that's very important, Jerry. That's the one thing you want to avoid. Demerits? That's right. You see, Jerry, there are over a hundred reasons for getting demerits, and you have to stay wide awake if you expect to get by without any. But what are they? Well, demerits are, uh, you might call them marks against your record, Jerry. When you get your book of rules and regulations, you'll learn all about them. As I said, there are many, many reasons for getting them, such as being late for any call, a failure to salute an officer, or talking in ranks or after taps, dirty shoes or untidy rooms. Oh, I see what you mean. Anytime you're caught at any of those things, you get a demerit. In most cases, more than one. Each offense calls for a certain amount. A failure to salute is one demerit, but, well, being late for class is four demerits. Oh. And then you have to work them off. Work them off? Sure. If you get too many, all your privileges are taken away. Well, uh, how do you work them off? Mm, there are different ways for different offenses. Confinement to quarters, extra study hours, and special duty jobs. Oh, look. Captain Gardner let Tubby go now. Come on, I want you to meet the captain. Don't forget to salute now. No, I won't. Come on, let's hurry. Uh, Captain Gardner. Is that Pitts? Uh, Captain Gardner, this is my roommate, Cadet Jerry Dugan. Oh, Cadet Dugan. Well, glad to know you, young man. Major Davis was telling me about you. You're the boy that was with the circus. Is that right? Yes, sir. Have you taken Cadet Dugan around the campus, Phillips? Well, I was just doing that now, sir. You want to get over to the stables and down to the lake and have a look at our gym, too. We're on the way to the gym now. Oh, uh, good. And Phillips? Yes, sir. You be sure to introduce Cadet Dugan to Mrs. Gardner. Oh, yes, sir. I'll do that, sir. You'll find Mrs. Gardner a valuable friend, Dugan. She's helpful to the new boys. She'll make you feel right at home here at Fair Oaks. That right, Phillips? Yes, sir. You and I'll have to have a little visit sometime, Dugan. I'd like to hear some of your circus experiences. Will we do that? You bet. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> That's better. Now, you two run along and see as much as you can. I'll see you in class in the morning, Dugan. Yes, sir. You know, Lee, I, I like him. Oh, everybody likes Captain Gardner. You like Mrs. Gardner, too. What does she do? Well, she's one of the instructors. She teaches mathematics. Will she be my teacher? Mm-hmm. That'll be your first class in the morning. Hey, Lee! Now, where'd that come from, Jerry? Gee, I don't know, but I heard somebody call you. Lee, over here behind the tree. I thought so. <laughs> Tubby. <laughs> come on, Jerry. Is the captain gone yet? Sure. Come on out from behind that tree. The captain just gave me a present. <laughs> yeah, we saw it. How many demerits this time? Only four. They must be running low on them. The captain says, Cadet Young, your cap is on the back of your head, your face is dirty, and you're chewing gum. What have you got to say for yourself? He had me there. I didn't have any answer ready. <laughs> Same old Tubby. Uh, Tubby, I want you to meet Jerry Dugan, my new roommate. Hi, Hello, Jerry. Tubby. Did you come just come to Fair Oaks today? Uh-huh. Got any demerits yet? No, I'm, I'm not going to get any. <laughs> That's what I thought, too. You'll find out. Hey, where are you you're heading for? Oh, we're going over to the gym. I'm showing Jerry around a little. Coming along? Sure. Let's go. Forward march. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Jerry used to be with Randall Brothers Circus, Tubby. Yeah? Yeah, you and Jerry should become great friends. I get it. I get it. The clown of Fair Oaks, and that was... And he was in the circus. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Lee, mm -hmm. could we walk down to the lake? I'd like to see what it looks like. Mm -hmm, yeah, I think we'll have time before recall. Oh, you see that building over there? Yeah, is that the gym? Yes. Hey, Linwell. That's Harold Linwell, Jerry. He's the youngest cadet at Fair Oaks. Nice boy, too. Oh, wait a minute, Harold. His father's Guy Linwell, the famous test pilot. You've heard of him, haven't you? No, I, I don't think so. Say, he's one of the greatest flyers there is. Hiya, fellas. I want you to meet my roommate, Jerry Dugan. I'm glad to meet you, Linwell. Same here. We're going over to the gym. Coming along? Yeah, that's just where I was going. Hey, what's going on there now? Oh, nothing special, Jerry. There might be some basketball practice, or some of the fellas might be trying out for track. There's a balcony track runs all the way around the gym. When you see it, it's keen. <laughs> it doesn't seem to have done you much good, Tubby. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the uh, drill field is out in back of the gym, and that's the stadium over there to the right. That's where we have our football games. And have we got a swell football team? They're champions, aren't they, Lee? Mm, I'll say they are. The gym mm. is big. I'll say it is. Hey, does it take up the whole building? No. When you see it, it's inside. The swimming You'll pool see. takes up almost half the building. Oh, oh, a pool too, huh? Sure. What do you think? Well, I thought as long as the lake is so close, there wouldn't be a swimming pool too. Well, here we are. Get the door open, Tubby. Okie dokes. Come on, Harold. I'm coming. Hey, look, there's the first string volleyball team. Boy, are they good. Yeah, and there are the scrub basketball teams playing down at the other end. 
Come on, let's walk around. See the track up in the balcony, Jerry? Oh, yeah. Say, that's all right. That door across there leads into the swimming pool. Well, what do you think of the gym, Jerry? Gee, it's keen. <laughs> I never saw such a big one. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. What? Led Morrison. Hey, Linwell, come here. You better go, Harold. Okay. What do you want? I was just looking for you. I want you to do me a favor. Why? I want you to go over to Trent Hall and ask someone over there to let you have a small-sized basketball. Tell them that one of the fellas, that the one they're using here, is too big for the basket. Uh-oh, this is bad. He's sending him over to Trent Hall. Poor Linwell is going to get in bad with the upperclassmen. And sending him for a small-sized basketball. Anybody knows there's no such a thing. Hey, uh, who is this Red Morrison? He's plenty tough, Jerry. I don't say anything, Jerry. All right, fun I won't. Hey, don't pay any attention to him, Harold. There isn't any such thing as a small-sized basketball. Who said that? I did. Hey, why don't you pick on somebody your own size to pull your bum jokes on? Well, how do you do? A green plebe. Now, that's a novelty. And a brand new fatigue uniform. My, aren't you pretty. What's your name? Jerry Dugan. Well, Dugan, you'd better learn to mind your own business. Only a little fella like Linwell would fall for a gag like that. Hmm, it looks like I'm going to have trouble with you, Dugan. You're going to learn how to address an upperclassman. Stand at attention while I'm talking to you. You better do as he says, Jerry. I'll handle this, Phillips. Now, Mr. Dugan, let me hear you apologize. Come on, out with it. Say you're sorry. It's the easiest way out, Jerry. Go ahead and get it over with. All right. I'm sorry. Put a sir on that. Sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. That's better. You can expect a call from me later, Dugan. We'll have to learn to understand each other. <sighs> you got out of that lucky. What do you mean, lucky? He's nothing but a big bully. Oh, take it easy, Jerry. We know that, but, well, Red Morrison is an upperclassman, and we're just pleased. Besides, he's a cadet captain, and he never forgets that, not even for one minute. It's going to be a whole lot easier for you to take it and forget it than try to fight it. If Red knows that he can get your gold, he'll just keep it up. Sure. Lee's right, Jerry. Just do what he wants you to do and forget it. But, well, what's his idea of playing jokes on a little fella like Carol here? Why didn't he try to pull that gag on you or on Tubby? Oh, well, he's had his fun with us, too. <laughs> Red's had a lot of laughs at our expense, huh, Tubby? I'll say so. But I just think to myself, there'll come a day when he who laughs last. Come on, let's get out of here. Okay, let's go down to the lake. Hey, uh, are all the cadet officers like him? Oh, I should say not. You'll like all the other fellas. Oh, come on, forget it. You and Red might become good friends. This is still your first day at Fair Oaks. A lot of things can happen. Or well, you might be an officer yourself someday. This way out, please. <laughs> You know something, Lee? What? I think Red is the first boy I ever met in my life that I didn't like. And believe me, I... Oh, come on, Jerry. Forget it. 